Today, I'm gonna share with you all my personal experience at a 10-day silent retreat, and I hope this story inspires you to do things out of the ordinary. On the Monday morning, I felt compelled to do something to get rid of my suffering as I lay my head on the pillow. I was troubled by living this groundhog day and the negative habits I was creating for myself, which were too deep for me to dig myself out of. I knew I needed a way out, a solution, a catharsis. However, a light bulb struck me and I realized now was the time to take a leap of faith and go to the event my mentor Charlie Casey had recommended. I quickly reached for the phone and I signed up without thinking or reading what I was getting into, but I believed and trusted in Casey. Later I would find out that I would be meditating for more than eight hours a day. Did I go too far when I signed up for this retreat for 10 days with just my thoughts? This is my Vipassana story. On day one, we all sat down and ate inside a retreat while everyone was finishing signing the waiver. Afterwards, the facilitators asked us to turn in all of our gadgets, our phones, along with our car keys. We're gonna need to take a pause here because there are a couple more things they asked us to do. So here are the lists of those things. They told us that there will be no talking or reading books or entertainment of any form no working out except walking on their garden, have noble silence at all times except speaking with your teacher, no writing, no drawing, no drugs, no prayers, and religious ceremony or worshiping of any kind as well, and no sexual activity. Phew, wow, that was a lot, wasn't it? But the noble silence didn't really bother me because I'm naturally an introvert. And lastly, the final wording was to give the people the chance to leave if they were not ready or determined to do the work. That way, it will allow them to eliminate as many distractions as possible. Nonetheless, I knew at that moment, there's no turning back now. So much so, I even decided to go through this experience blind. That's right, blind without my eyeglasses to boost my inward reflection and avoid distraction. Determination is part of my virtue, so quitting is not in my nature. I truly believe that you shouldn't quit just because it gets difficult. As I woke up from the gentle swinging of the bell in my designated lonely small room, I felt like a little kid all over again. I said, give me one more minute Vipassana. The bell continued to get louder as the guy with the bell got closer and closer. At 4 a.m. in the morning, ignoring my feelings. So I reluctantly dressed up and headed to the meditation room. As I was sitting silently in the meditation position, half asleep, wiping the mucus off my eyes, God spoke to me. So I thought. It was actually a recording of a spiritual teacher named Gohenka, letting us all know the special instructions on the meditation we would all have to go through. For the first few days, we were to practice focusing on the breath. A small yet huge tip he gave us all was to focus on feeling the air going on and off the upper lip. This practical tip was worth the entire week there, and I'm 100% sure it will help you with your meditation practice. Each day would build on this foundation. After the instructions, we started to meditate for about two hours straight. The bell rang and it was time for breakfast. As I walked out, I said to myself, damn, that was easy. I can totally do this for another 10 days. Nonetheless, little did I know that after breakfast, we will all go back to meditating for three more hours have lunch, and meditate some more. I was in for a treat.
the bell started to get a little louder and louder for my ears to handle and again I would wake up feeling a little annoyed by it. Part of my science-based mind said sleeping is the most important thing for recovery and replenishment. These fools don't even understand the importance of this science. So again I reluctantly gave in and went back to the meditation room half asleep. As I followed the instructions with the breath, I fought with what seemed to be impossible to get rid of, the inner dialogue. All I can think of was, what am I going to do differently when I, when I get back home? The bell rang and the rest of the day followed the same fighting pattern. The chatterbox will disguise itself in many forms from what to do next to what I'm going to do better to what I should have done. Try your best not to get lost in it like I did, but to observe it. As I was walking to the lunchroom in noble silence, half blind, I was able to see one person leaving with their luggage. I couldn't really understand why someone would leave. Yes, it was challenging, but why leave now? However, more people would follow that same person's footsteps and I would understand why the following day.